Uh, welcome everybody to our very first webinar of the new year. We're joined today by Farouk Koyum, who will be presenting to us a cross plot analysis in Open Detect. He will show us many different aspects and uh, cases where you can use it and it can improve your workflow. And Farouk today is joined by Arnaud and Satyaki. So they will be our panelists today. If you have any questions, they will be answering. And also, due to some strange uh, winter weather in Houston, uh, Arnaud will be uh, acting as moderator today, and you might lose me at some point. <laughs> so if you have any questions, they will be going directly to Arnaud. So please do feel free to ask questions as we go along. And if for any reason we do lose power. Um, hello, everybody. I think there is a problem and my colleague Rene, she just got offline because there is a power failure in Houston. <laughs> but things are not going well in the beginning, but um, if you are hearing me, uh, I'm Phil Kuyum, so I'll just start uh, by now. Today uh, we are going to uh, learn about uh, an excellent tool available in OpenDetect. It's about cross plotting data in OpenDetect. It is a tool that a seismic interpreter wants to use every day. I guess, and you might want to use it also. So uh, I hope that you will enjoy today's talk. Um, our goal of this webinar is uh, to illustrate and to demonstrate the features of Open Detail cross plotting tool. Uh, to cover this, uh, we will have three parts of our discussion: a brief introduction on on different parts of cross plotting. I will start with uh, with a with a question: Why would you use cross plotting tool in, and of Open Detect? And then we will see the generalized structure of cross plotting. How does the data is extracted, and how you are going to display the data? The introduction will be followed by some cross plot examples, and the examples are covering some aspects of of data cross plotting, like you seeing the seismic attributes. How do you how you are going to predict seismic uh, objects or seismic facies, etc., and how how you are going to do reservoir characterization using this tool? And after this, I will I will give you a demonstration of a of a cross of several cross plots in Open Detect. The main reason why you are going to use Open Detect uh, cross plotting tool, I think it's, it's 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 there is a pretty good reason behind it. It's free and it has versatile features. It is friendly. You can it's very simply organized. You just need to extract data and plot it simply. It has many the interactive displays like color coded scatter plots, simple scatter plots, density plots, and much more. You can draw manual regression fits. You don't need to get automatic regression fits, but you can draw by yourself using mouse and you can extract pick sets so that you can do seismic prediction using neural networks you can extract some geologic bodies geological bodies from seismic data and overall the data is exchange model is actually in ASCII file format so you can get the data in ASCII format into cross plot and you get the data in ASCII format out of the cross plot and you can also predict rock properties using this tool there is another advantage in it we have added Bayesian probability density plots in, through this cross plot too Um, I just summarize um, uh, the overall applications of crossword inside open detect and on this slide you see that there are several applications of this tool it's I think it's it's a very good quality control tool because you have so many attributes to understand the relationships in between you just need to cross plot and see if they are giving you the same sense the same meaning that is, if there is any relationship or not and then you can just discard some seismic attributes from your analysis and you can also predict seismic objects using supervised, supervised neural network prediction. You can get those uh, supervised points so that you can train them in any 3D volume and get the, uh, the desired outputs out on a map or in a volume. You can also do uh, another prediction like rock property prediction. You can for this we have actually added Bayesian based uh, uh, property prediction, which is a probability density function, and you can also extract geologic bodies. So there there are there are several disciplines that are integrated inside Open Detects, like reservoir modeling, understanding the reservoir using rock properties, and quality control. 
here is actually a generalized structure of cross plotting in OpenDTEC. You get the data, OpenDTEC data, either some well or seismic, you plot, you extract the data, and you simply plot them. And the plot is actually directly integrating with the OpenDTEC live scene. You can select the data from this cross plot and you can display it in, in, in OpenDTEC. When you have displayed it, and then you can actually control those points and you can store those points to do any seismic prediction or geologic bodies. And you can also extract the data along this trace or along seismic interpretations. Here is a, actually a window which is used to extract the data along a well path. So on, on, it's, it's actually a window which is going to be used to do a well versus and seismic attribute cross plot. So data is in for this window along it's, it's actually extracted along a well path. On top panel you see a seismic data or seismic attributes you get stored volumes or create an attribute defined in open data and you select multiples in the list and you also select some wells from this list and the corresponding blocks. And after that, you can also restrict the the analysis to the targets. Like define, you can define well zones between two markers or to a defined depth. Another extraction window, which is actually used for seismic attribute versus seismic attribute cross plotting, it is almost the similar almost identical to the, the window that you saw previously, but there is only one difference that the data is extracted in a trace dimension in any Z axis defined by the survey or the seismic trace segment. You, so you select multiple seismic attributes or the stored seismic data, or you, it can be a 2D line also. And you can also define the, the data extraction by zones or sub-volumes, or you can also restrict a zone between two seismic interpretations like horizons. And you can also apply subselect for the subselection by trying a polygon or restricting some points, and that's it. After this, you're going to get this window, which is actually the extraction window. And after extraction, it is actually displaying the data in an in a, in a Excel-like shape. So these columns are actually the, the, the in these columns you are going to select them and you are going you're going to use them in a cross plot. I will come back to this point when we, I will be presenting and different cross plots in open detect. And finally you can display a cross plot in open detect. It's a simple density plot. I have displayed it. There are many other displays and you will see them during the live demo. So so far we have just uh, got a broad overview of the cross plot window and how do you are going to get, get a cross plot in open detect and what are the benefits. Now I'm going to show you some more applications, some examples in a next slide. Here you go. Uh, across, uh, as I just said earlier, cross plotting is actually a very good quality control tool. You have so many seismic attributes in the industry. You just need to plot two or three attributes together and see if they are highlighting the same seismic object or if there is a relationship or not. In here you see that selection of the same area almost close to slope, frequency slope bar, which is actually equal to high frequency amplitude and high frequency both are highlighting almost the same object there is no difference so in this way you can discard either of the attributes and use only one attribute in your seismic prediction another cross plot example this is a cross plot extracted from uh, a bright spot from uh, a dead structure that's off your Netherlands and it's highlighting a bright spot which is a, has actually a split when I actually cross plot uh, low frequencies but versus high, relatively high frequencies. If I select this cluster, I display a separate part of the, of the bright spot and I, if I select this cluster, then I actually highlight a separate part of the cross bar. So in this way, you can interactively communicate with, with open detect scene to predict the seismic objects and in their relationship. The split on this cross bar is actually because of the change in tuning thickness because of the gas saturation or gas column. Another example, a simple um, well, well versus seismic uh, data cross parts. So on x-axis you see porosity, on y-axis you see acoustic impedance. You can do old style linear prediction of, of porosity by cross plotting them. You just draw a regression line, you get the regression equation out, 
you go to open detect uh, attribute set window you put this equation in there to predict uh, porosities and in this way you can do lean, you can linearly transform acoustic impedance into porosity in open detect and you can also do object detection using crossbar. It allows you to create geo bodies from the selected points. Here you see seven different bodies red. These are actually gas pockets and salt which are actually coming from the crossbar in op from open detect. So th that's another application. And you can do much more. You can so get data points for a supervised prediction that you are somewhat biased. So you cross plot two or three seismic attributes, you select multiple areas and you give them as an output classes and you use these points together with seismic attributes and you train them together and you can get a predictive facial map and then you can integrate this map with the well data to get more values out of it. And this is something new, and we recently implemented that. And it's actually um, a Bayesian function, which is coming, which is a probability density function, and it's it's a very useful tool. I will be demonstrating that for a well data, and you can predict or you can characterize the reservoir. Yep. So that's uh, that was the main overview of the of the cross mount. So let's go back to Open Detect and do some exercises so that we will learn this tool very well after this webinar. So in here, you see um, a seismic data plus a, a seismic horizon interpreted in a, in an Open Detect scene. Here you go, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you what actually, here you go. So in here you see actually a bright spot, which is, uh, which is very bright and you don't see any, 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 any clear variation on, on, an, on a vertical section. We have interpreted a horizon, and along the horizon we have extracted an amplitude on it. So on this amplitude map, you see there is a, a, a red color ring, which is outlining the overall bright spot. So this is the total amplitude extracted along a seismic horizon. What I want to do, I want to cross plot within this bright spot area by drawing a polygon, and I want to do some kind of attribute analysis, and I will cross plot the, the several attributes for this zone only. So first of all, what I need to do, I need to draw a polygon that you can do quickly using pick certain polygon element from the tree. DHI area, I give it a color, a distinct color that you can see right here. So I draw a small polygon to restrict, restrict my analysis. Here you go. And I can close this polygon by right clicking on it. And I can save it. Okay, in this way I have actually defined an area for cross plot data extraction. Now what I need to do, I just need to define some attributes. You can do attribute analysis by pressing this button or you can go analysis and attributes. In this attribute analysis window, what you see, there are three attributes they already, already defined. I'm doing spectral decomposition at three discrete frequencies, 24, 44, and 60 hertz. And I'm going to extract these frequencies along that horizon within the defined polygon. It's okay. How are you going to cross plot? You're going to cross plot through the same menu analysis. That's why we call it cross plot analysis. So through cross plot, you see there are three options, well logs versus attributes, whether you want to cross plot a well data versus seismic attribute or seismic attribute versus seismic attribute or you can retrieve or store cross plot. I want at this moment to cross plot a seismic attribute versus seismic attribute. So I press this option and 
the attribute cross plotting window pops up. This is a window which is going to extract data along a horizon. The horizon should be selected by a user, so I'm going to provide it. First of all, what I need you to do, which attribute do I want to calculate or extract? So I want these three attributes, select locations by along a horizon, and my horizon is this one. And I want to, f I don't want to extract along full surface, but I want to extract within a polygon, so I need to apply a location filter. You press the select button, and in here you need to find polygon option, specify filters. So I have specified a polygon filter, I need to select a polygon, which was that, DHI area, why I have actually this thing there, and I select that, and that's it. So I have selected three attributes, horizon and a polygon, this is what I actually wanted. So there you go, I just need to press OK to start extracting the data. And it's going to run a progress bar which will show you that data is going to be extracted and at the end it will show you a sheet, an Excel sheet, a sheet which will look like an Excel and there you go. So this is, this is actually an attribute extracted data within a polygon and we can now we are almost done and we just, so we can simply select any, col any two columns and we can then simply cross plot them. Before we cross plot, I would like to introduce a few buttons so that that are often used. So on the left hand, top left, you see save button. You can save this extracted data so that you can retrieve it later on. Call it DHI analysis or at demo six horizon. So I have saved the data and later on I can retrieve it. Here you go. But at this moment, I'm not going to do that. I press cancel. I already have a nice data displayed here. And next option are actually the column selections for cross bar. So X button is actually, you select a column here and you press this button. This column will appear as actually X axis of a cross bar. And if you want to display another axis, then you need to put it on another axis, which is Y and you click on the column and you press Y plus button. If you don't want to use this Y as, as a Y axis for cross plot, then you just unselect Y axis data. But I want at this moment to cross plot low frequencies versus medium frequency of this data. So I, so I have selected on X axis 24 hertz uh, amplitude and on Y axis I have selected 44 hertz amplitude. And on the top right hand side there is a small uh, two axis button with some dots in it. This is actually scattered cross plot for the selected axis. You press it and finally you display cross plot. This is our first cross plot which looks nice. I see some data cluster on, on top of each other. I can change my display into density plot and you can do it by pressing this button. Here you go. And in this moment, there is a, there is a difference that in the when you are displaying a simple scatter plot, then you actually see 50% of the data is displayed. And if you want to display all data with some density on it, if they are overlapping with each other, then you just toggle off, or toggle the other plot, normal density plot off on. So at this moment, what I want to do, I want to see what does this correspond to and what does this correspond to in a, in a, in a, on a horizon. And I can simply do that by selecting these points through selection mode. You see the selection mode on top right buttons and there is, you can select this one and it turns into a polygon select type of selection and you simply draw a green polygon. There you go. So I have selected a nice cross plot area which is not actually overlapping with, the, with the, another cloud and I display it in a live scene. And to display that you need to press this green button, the button with black screen in it. And here you go. So that selection has highlighted an area 
this selection has highlighted an area of high amplitude and higher frequencies and I can select this area and I see okay that goes slightly out slightly off and this is actually how the highlighting low increasing amplitude with low frequency and decreasing amplitude with high frequencies and I want to know what does this correspond to okay this is our outermost boundary these variations in these amplitudes at discrete frequencies are due to gas column variation so this is our first exercise that Haltel that has actually which was useful to display the data in his scene to see across how to you cross spot in open data so I I go back and I go back to the attribute data window in here the further off buttons are actually accessories and they are not often used and you see some small static and you see small static here this is actually to sort the data along any column so that you can browse through the data where the data is bad you simply go there and you double click on, on a cell and you simply modify it yeah. and furthermore if you don't if you see that there are some points which are actually wrong points you select those points and you can delete those rows from the data set and you press this button remove selected rows with a cross delete all do you want to delete all um, similar uh, data sets which has this range or you want to delete selected only I want to delete selected only no that type is gone and next you can also plot histograms which are very important you select the column and you press I information button which is actually show histogram and statistics for a column and now you can analyze okay what is the mean of this attribute what is the mean standard deviation what is the mean median and you can use them for statistical analysis of the data that's it and I'm going to jump to another cross plot example which is um, which might be useful for you I display an inline in here you see seismic data and I want to apply another attribute on it and go to attribute set window I open a special attribute set which was actually saved already and I have actually previously created an average frequency attribute and I want to display it live on this section press OK and I add an attribute I display the frequency attribute on it okay. so this is an average frequency attribute on one inline only what you see in here you see this got about 22 to 66 hertz the average frequency is actually decreasing with increasing depth I want to normalize it so that whenever I do any seismic prediction which is dependent by zones or time to a travel time and then it should not bother about it and the frequency output should be normalized so I'm going to do this um, I'm going to cross plot this average frequency versus y-axis which was uh, to a travel time in, in this case it's a seismic in time domain um, I can cross plot the data directly from attribute set window which is here cross plot attributes press the same button and you select the average frequency you don't need to select anything you can discard them more and you can do it on one inline only for example I do it on 213 213 and I can increase these steps for example after every 120 cross plus then this is not necessary because I'm doing only one inline and I can extract after 120 cross lines I discard the shallow section because shallow section has much more noise in it so I just get data 200 millisecond down to the end of the data and I extract for example after 8 millisecond furthermore I can apply location filter 
random percentage to pass, for example, 5% data, which is actually a special filter. With this sub-selection, you are passing only 5% of out of it, and you're discarding much out of it. So I just need to plot some points. I want to see how does it look like. So I, after pressing OK, I have the same cross-plot uh, ex data extraction window, which is like an Excel. I plot x axis with z, y axis with frequencies, and I cross plot them. This is much less. I need to increase the I don't, cannot predict anything out of it, so I need to increase the data. And I pass more things here for maybe 50%. There you go. At this time, I have more points in here. I want to. I want to discard these null points. I don't need them. You see, they very average frequency is undefined. And I put x axis z, y axis the average frequency, and I cross plot. There you go. On this cross plot, what you see, there is a trend of, of frequency attenuation. And what I want to do, I want to put a regression fit which is drawn manually, and I can want to get that equation out and I want to normalize the average frequency response of the data. And to do that, you need to go to this property button. You press this button, and you go to user defined tab, and in here, you need to draw a line. Show I want user defined line, you need to select these thing, two things. You move this window slightly out, and you draw a linear trend. And you use this equation to get a normalized trend for average frequency and norm, then you can normalize this frequency. So I have saved this equation. I close this one. I'm done with this cross plot. I don't save this. Close. Cancel everything. I come back to this attribute tree set, 3D attribute set window. For that I need z-axis. So I extract z-axis which is actually true wave travel time from any seismic volume through reference seismic attributes. And then what I did, I did a simple mathematics. I stored that equation, and I used that equation to reconstruct a normalized frequency trend. So this is the regression equation which is coming from the cross plot. And then you just divided the, this trend with the average frequency attribute, which was the first one. And then you actually get a normalized frequency. What happens if I display this frequency on section? Here you go. Now, if you compare this frequency with the, other, the previous one, which was not normalized, this is not normalized, and this is after normalization, you have actually a normalized frequency trend. If you are going to predict a seismic object here, and you pick only here, then using this normalized frequency, you might predict similar seismic objects based on this frequency trend. So this was another exercise which was actually showing how you are going to draw a manual regression line and how you are going to get benefit out of it. So at this moment, we have seen two examples. Both were coming from the seismic data. Now the third example is I want to cross plot the well data only. How you are going to do that? So this is a data which is actually in a depth domain. So depth domain plus it has a sample, very fine samples, one meter depth. Do you have sample after every one meter depth? So I want I have two wells in here. They are vertical wells, and I was lucky about that. And they are not deviated. And I want to extract some cross plots along a um, reservoir, and uh, I want to see if there is any relationship of these rock properties with this seismic property. So to do that, you go to analysis menu, cross plot well log versus attribute cross plot. You select this button and on top you see on this data selection window you see there is no attribute or no volume in this data. I don't have any seismic data loaded in this data in this survey. But I have some wells in here. I can simply select these wells and all of these logs and I can sub select my zone of interest which are actually marker in this case. So I have extracted the data between two markers only, and I'm extracting these logs coming from these two wells. And I 
don't extract anything out of this data or, or along the, uh, anything that is away from the well. So I press OK. It's not extracting well logs along the well paths at one meter depth. So here you go. So you have seen an, a data set of logs. Several logs are extracted. At some point they are not. some point the values go wrong. I can sort them. So in here if you click on any row, you see at the bottom you have actually the well ID on which well, well you don't have data. You see there is nothing in it because I don't have n file log in here. But what I want to do, I want to plot two rock properties here. On x-axis, I want to put density. On y-axis, I want to put gamma ray. And I have selected these two columns. You see there is a prefix x and y, so I can cross plot them. Here you go. So this is cross plot of density versus gamma ray. I can restrict my axis also. I can go to settings. And on x-axis, I want no clipping, but I want my manual scale 2.2, 2.8 maybe, 2.65.05 probably, I see, okay, that's fine. And also, I can do the same thing for Bukamari. I don't have so many values above 100, so I just restrict this also. Okay, here you go. So in this way you can change these settings. And what else is there? You have displayed 100% of data. Well data is normally, it's not too much. You don't get so many points. So you don't have memory issues in there. And you can select only one well to see the individual cross, cross mod for individual wells, sorry. And you can see all three. And if I'm displaying both wells, I might want to display uh, these well points in, in a color code and I just want to color code it. So to do that you toggle on multi color coding button which is on the left hand side this button. You select this one. By default it's using the default colors for these two wells. I can change these colors if I want to. So for B41 well I give it a blue color and for L30 I might want to give it a red color. For example this one. So if I press OK so L30 is in red and the other one is blue. You see both two wells are almost giving us the same lithological information within the reservoir interval. What else I can do? I can also change the overlay type instead of wells. I can overlay these scatter points with another block or another attribute. So to do that, you select these color coded scatter points button, you press it and you can overlay Y1 attribute with another log, for example, acoustic impedance. When you apply in here, you see that increase in impedance is actually pink to red, so high impedance, high density, and decrease in impedance is blue. So on this map, you see, for example, I can have many regression hits if it's there. One, two, and three. So I have many options in here, but I actually see that there is a gum, there is a very good sign within this reservoir, 25 to 50 API, and it has actually changed in density. So I can get probabilities of these overlap zones, and to do that, I press this B X button, create probability density function. I press this one. On X axis, I have density. I have a range of 2.2, 2.65. I can these bins are actually the the grids that you want to create, maybe 50. Between these two points, I have actually a range of point um, for five. Yeah, so 50. That's fine. Zero to 100, maybe not 20, because my data is above 20 somewhere. And I create 50 bins here also. I can add third attribute, that three dim third dimension in there for to the probability density function and I can set a range of impedance in here also. And I can increase its bin size. And I call it PDF of AI. When you create this one, it will say a probability density function is created. To see that, 
you will have to go to manage probability density functions and in here I have already previously saved a very good PDF cross plot. I select this one and I select browse or edit the probability density function which is the bottom most button on the left hand side. So this is it and you can when you are in this window you normally see at a certain impedance value you have mainly zero probability. You just press this view function button to see the output of the, this first probability of acoustic impedance. It, does, it looks like this. These next and back arrows buttons are used to change the acoustic impedance values within a certain increment which was defined by previously with the bin value. So you press next 78, 75, 8125 acoustic impedance value. You see there is a change of the area. The point here is that it's a, it's a well data and it's, it's, it has very less points in there. I might need to slightly smooth in out so that I see the center of the cloud clearly. To do smoothing, you need to press the sinusoidal wave button. To press it, smooth it slightly, maybe slightly higher, maybe slightly more maybe something like this. The red color here is, is actually the center point where we have more data points or more probability. probability. So this is low impedance 7625 is actually somewhere in here 2.3 density and I increase it and I see another similar sandstone with high impedance. So in this way I can characterize a sand which is slightly isolated in here and with a sand that has a probability of acoustic impedance at a clipping range of 9875 and I can distinguish these two points clearly. Yeah, that's it and um, now there are a few more things in, in a cross one. That's actually a data exchange and that will be my last demo. Uh, how you're going to get data out of a crossbar and how you're going to get at, at data from external resources. We normally share data in an ASCII format also. Previously, I have saved data set in open data format and I save it through crossbar extraction window. And you can also save this data in ASCII format. You just need to output a text file. And in here, you write the text for data txt of key wells, for example. And you press OK. Oh, that was somewhere in a where I don't have permissions. But I have saved this data, for example, and I can retrieve, I can also import cross bond data. Yeah, in ASCII format. For that you just need to go to survey menu on top left, import cross plot data, ASCII format. Just press this button and you will get import cross plot data window. In here you just need to select, browse the file, select the file, you can examine it. This file looks like this. Yeah, here you go. So you have column 1, column 2, column 3 with certain values. Yeah, you go on top, row 1 is actually an indicator of the column name. I want to use this column name also and I don't want to load it from the first row. That's good. So in here, I don't want to provide any header. I don't want to skip anything in it. So I need to define a format for that. I go to the file, I see that again. Let me check what was on the first column. Column 1 is inline, column 2 is cross line, column 3 is Z slice and the rest data is actually sorted. On, on, on its name, so row one. So define column one. Actually, it's inline cross line sorted. Column one, column two, Z is on column three. It was in meter. It's in depth. I press OK. And first row contains column names. Yeah, that's it. And imported cross plot data. Press OK. OK, here you go. It has imported the data. I want to see it. To see it, you go back to Analysis menu, cross plot, and there is was third option which we did not use in the beginning. It's open cross plot. 
it will automatically plot uh, open the load position vector data which is actually cross plot data you select the recently imported data is it okay here you go it has imported the same cross plot data from a OSCII file yeah there you go I will say thank you very much and um, yeah over to Rene or Arno I will say if you have any question please let me know Arno or Rene yes thank you Farouk yep welcome um, we have good uh, received a number of questions um, so some of them on um, on more display features. Um, are there more general questions you would like to mention? We can now start the question session. One of the questions I have received is uh, if we can do mathematics in the spreadsheet view. Uh, no, actually this um, this table only presents extracted data and also the fields are editable you can uh, correct a value by entering another value you cannot make equations in the spreadsheet no. view what you can do instead you can define a mathematics attribute that will work on the attributes or on the well logs it's mm. available for both Maybe and extract the corresponding attributes again right here attribute 1 plus attribute 2 for example yeah, it's like two data sets so it has to be done as a new attribute that will be added to the list and eventually re-extracted in the crossplot tool mm -hmm. you can do the same thing for well create in the well file management you press create and you do the same log one divided by log two set and you can select this like this okay and here the fill empty sections are used to um, extend a log so for instance if the gamma ray log is shorter than the sonic log you will want to f to fill the empty sections in order to allow the computation of the output log where only the sonic log exists for instance for instance and you can do also do logics in the same way as in the mat mathematics attributes in the in the ways it's uh, the same uh, attribute that works behind only on logs instead of um, instead of attributes. Yeah, something like this. Another question we have received is um, concerning the default steps for the extraction of data of, uh, of three attributes. Uh, they are by default set to very large values, uh, so I believe 8 by 8 laterally and 400 milliseconds or meters vertically. Uh, that is only done in order to avoid extracting too many points when you go through quickly over that window. If you, the more points you will extract, the longer it will take and it will also have a large impact on your memory. So by default, the steps are set to very large values, uh, just to avoid getting problems with uh, memory consumption. You can always uh, you can always uh, lower the, the step out um, if you would examine a single inline or a single trace, for instance. Are there, are there other questions? Oh, 
Okay. So if there are no more questions, we'll go through the end of this meeting. So if the um, okay, so I assume there are no more questions. Um, okay, so um, apparently we still have uh, problems, connection problems with our Houston office. Um, so I'd like to thank you for participating in this uh, webinar on um, on the cross route analysis. And um, I mostly welcome you to the next webinar on uh, on in the first Wednesday of March. Um, that will be uh, conducted by Fiso Brar from our Houston office on uh, discontinuity attributes in Open Detect. So all attributes you can uh, you can use to um, to visualize faults, uh, flexures and all these kind of geological uh, structural features from uh, from open detect and using many the diff steered uh, plugin of open detect okay so let me um, the link uh, the link to was sent uh, in email yesterday so you can already um, you can already join that meeting If uh, if uh, if not, oh sorry, I just had a mistake. The link uh, that was sent yesterday was to to cast your vote for topics. Uh, we have uh, proposed a number of uh, of topics, and um, although it's still open, you you can please feel free to uh, propose us any top any topics you like to to see in webinars. Uh, we've listed a number of topics and we'd like to, see, to get your preferences for these topics. Okay, so thanks a lot and um, hope I'll see you on the next uh, webinar.